Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number seven in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we've learned in our earlier lessons is we've learned that the battle for Fusion 360 is won or lost at the 2D sketch level. And in the couple of last lessons, I've been teaching you how to master that 2D sketch level, how you can teach the 2D sketch who's boss okay and today's lesson is also going to be at you know about mastering the 2D sketch level in the last few lessons we talked about the importance of fully constraining our sketches we talked about the importance of being deliberate about dimension and about position and then we talked about how sketching can be your best friend if you, I mean, uh, the, the constraints can be your best friend if you really learn how to use them. Now, the theme for today's lesson is anything that can be done at the 2D level should be done at the 2D level. It must be done at the 2D level because that will create fully constrained sketches and designs that allow you to very easily edit your very complicated three-dimensional designs. And this will make a little bit more sense as we get into it and as I show you some examples. But before I jump into the lesson, a couple of quick bookkeeping issues. And the first is remember in future lessons, I'm going to be teaching you about how to get out of the way of the camera. I'm going to be teach, teaching you the very important the engineering design concept associated with design rules, determining your design rules for your manufacturing process, and then designing to those design rules. In these classes, our manufacturing process is the 3D printer. Well, if we are going to define our design rules or determine our design rules, we need to have a good set of calipers. There is a link down in the description over to Amazon where you can get the same set of calipers that I have. You need to go ahead and get your calipers ordered because those lessons are coming up pretty soon. If you already have some calipers, great. Just, it, just about any calipers that you already have will work. If you don't have calipers, it would be great to use the same ones that I have. So if you don't have your calipers already, go ahead and order them. One other thing I should say before we jump into this lesson is you might be hearing a little hum, a little buzz, a little clickety click in the background. That would be my most excellent Creality Ender, ver uh, Ender 3 version 2 printer. And what I'm doing is I'm working on, I'm doing some work for future lessons. In our earlier prints, you notice we've been printing very small things and very small things are easy to print. As you get to bigger prints, prints that occupy a larger amount of space on the print bed, it becomes more and more difficult for those to get those prints to adhere to the print bed. And so what I'll be doing in future le lessons is giving you some pro tips about design techniques and uh, printer tweak techniques that you can do to your printer to get those first levels to really adhere even when it's great big prints like that. So that's just giving you a heads up of lessons that are coming in the future and also just a little uh, heads up about if you hear a little hum or a little buzz in the background, it is my printer. Nothing is running amiss. Enough of this talk. Let's jump in and let's come back over here. Let's jump in and let's start designing. So I need you to fire up Fusion 360 
And what we are going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about how to modify and use modified tools at the 2D sketch level. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say create a sketch. We sketch always in the XY plane, which is the red green plane, which is this one. And boom, a fresh new 2D sketch just waiting for you to jump in and design. And so I'm trying to get this a good view here. So I think what I'll do is to introduce this, we're going to be looking at these modified tools here. We know the create tools. We know the constraint tools. We're going to look at the modified tools. What are we going to start with? Oh, let's start with a rectangle. So I click on rectangle. I come over the origin, hover over the origin, click one time, release, and then drag. And now I'm deliberate about what? I'm deliberate about dimensions. So let's make this 150 in width. So I tap in 150, tab over to the height box. And let's make this, oh, let's make this uh, 85, say and then click enter and boom, we have a rectangle. Not just any old rectangle, but we have a fully constrained rectangle. If I bring that down, sketch one has the little lock on it, meaning it's fully constrained. Why? Because I started at the origin and it put that constraint to tie the corner to the origin. So I was deliberate about position and then I put my dimensions in, I was deliberate about dimension and I am rewarded with what? The little lock icon. So we are ready to move forward. Now, if I were going to print this shape, I would say that those corners are really sharp, like they could almost cut your hand. And so let's say what I would want to do is round those corners a little bit. The way we could round the corners is come in to modify, and you can see there is this modify tool called the fillet. You might call it fillet. I'm going to call it fillet. So I'm going to select fillet. And then this is how the fillet tool works. What do I want to fill it? I want to fill it this line and this line. And you see how it puts a nice curve on it. What it has done is it has defined that curve as a radius, a circle with radius 20 millimeters. I think that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to edit that to 10. Okay. And we get a nice smooth curve. I think that looks about right. But don't click enter yet why I want to fill it all the corners. So now I come in and I fill it here and here. Okay. And I need to show you one other thing that's going on. <clears throat> I'm going to have to become the munchkin so you can see what's right behind me. Now watch this when I'm going to click here. Okay. What happened? I'm getting an error back behind my head. Watch. Okay. Do you see? Let me... It, pops up and down really quick. I'll say here and here, you see that, uh, you see that error. What that error is saying is, is that as I am using this fillet tool, there are constraints in my sketch that are being erased. Why am I getting that error? Did I do something wrong? No, <clears throat> there used to be a corner here and where those two endpoints came together, those two endpoints of the line were had a constraint to be coincident. And when I eliminate that corner, I eliminate the constraint and it's just a warning. Hey, you eliminated a constraint. Well, I eliminated it because the corner is gone. And what I really care about is my little lock icon is still there. So I don't really care that I was getting that warning because I don't need those constraints because that corner is not there. If you get a warning and then your little lock icon goes away, then you care. All right, but if we click enter now, boom, you can see that it is fully constrained, which is okay. I can ignore this warning and I got a fully constrained, uh, fully constrained uh, sketch. But let me come back to a more reasonable size here. And let's look at this cool, let's look at this really cool little object that we just designed. A rectangle with nicely rounded corners. I love it. I love it a lot. <clears throat> but if we were going to make this a little tray or a little box or container and we were going to extrude it, <clears throat> we wouldn't want it to be solid. We would want to extrude walls and then just have a bottom and then extrude the walls. And so in order to do that, what we would need would be another shape almost identical to this, but slightly smaller. Okay. And then we could extrude the center part to be the bottom and extrude that exterior ring to be the walls. Okay. Now, if I spent about 10 minutes futzing with this thing, I could draw another version of this properly positioned and slightly smaller. But we have another friend besides the fillet 
tool, we have a friend that is called the offset tool. So we come under modify, we get offset. Now it is saying, what do you want to offset? Select what you want to offset. <clears throat> I want to select this curve to do the offset. And boom, it draws an offset, which is the red perimeter, and it draws it one millimeter around what I drew to the outside. But really, I don't want to extrude out because I put the right dimension, the route outside dimension on my original sketch. So I want to adjust this. And instead of one millimeter, I wanted to go minus because I want it to extrude in, not extrude. I want it to uh, offset in instead of offsetting out. And I want to go about five. And now I can click enter and boom, look at that. That would be a perfect sidewall to a box. And I am rewarded with what? I am rewarded with a still fully constrained sketch. Okay, now let's watch. We spent a couple of minutes at the sketch level. We are fully constrained. We used our modified, modified tools as our friends. And now I can come over and say finish sketch. I can click on the home view. And now let's watch the magic happen. I'm going to select this center region and I'm going to say extrude. How far do I want to extrude that? Well, let's make it about the same as we made the sidewalls, five millimeters. Okay, and boom, I've got a nice bottom of my box. Okay, and now I will click OK. Notice when I click OK, my sketch disappears. I can bring it back by coming over here and clicking the little eyeball, and then I've got my sketch back. Now I can come in and I can click on this body, that ring around the outside. I want to what now? Extrude. And now I'm going to extrude by how much here in this little box? I'm going to say 50. Uh, that's not enough. Let's say 75 just because we can and enter. Boom. Look at this beautiful little box that we made in about three minutes. If I wasn't talking so much, we would have done this in two or three minutes because why we are mastering the sketch level. We are primarily designing in 2D. We are being deliberate about position and dimension, and we are fully constraining our sketches before we leave the sketch level. And then very quickly, we can end up with something super cool like this. Now you could have futzed around with this and you could have gotten this same shape, doing it a very poor way. <coughs> but let me show you the power of doing it the right way. I don't like it very much. I want to come over here and sometimes if it doesn't let you edit your sketch, you need to come over here to select and then you need to click off of that body and then come over here and right mouse click and say edit sketch. Now let's look at some of the things that I can edit here. Let's say this, I really want to be 95 instead of 85. Okay. I really want those corners a little rounder. Well, do you see where it has the radius here? It gives me that radius of the curve hidden there. Instead of 10, I'm going to make that 20. I'm going to go back and really make that round. Now, because I did all the fillets at the same time before hitting enter, they're all tied together. If I did a fillet, hit enter, did a fillet and hit enter, you would have to go and you would have to individually edit each one because I did them all at the same time, they were all tied to the same dimension. And uh, I think I want the sidewalls a little thicker. And so that is hidden right here. That dimension is here. Okay, I'm gonna pull that on out so we can see it more. And then I'm gonna double click on that and I want that seven and a half. Remember, it's a minus. It's a minus because it is offset in. And so I'm going to say minus 7.5. Okay. And then boom, look at that. I have more round corners. I've got a thicker sidewall and I've got a slightly different dimension. And I am rewarded with what? I am rewarded with a fully constrained design. Okay. A fully constrained sketch. And now I click finish sketch and I come over here to the home view and look at that. Boom. The whole shebang has been adjusted to the changes in the 2D level. And so this 3D design follows the 2D sketch. And as I edit the 2D sketch, 
those edits are reflected in my 3D device. And so you not only get something that once we understand that 2D level, we can design quickly and we can design things that are very easy to edit. We can design things that are very easy to edit like that. So that is pretty powerful. So now I'm going to undo. Now, you know what I'm going to do when I undo and go back, then sometimes my designs get confused. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to start with a fresh new design. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say create, create a sketch. I'm going to sketch in the XY plane and that way we don't have any confusion. There's no confusion where we are or what we are trying to do. I'm rolling that mouse wheel to kind of get the origin over here so it's not behind my head, if that makes sense. So what have we learned already? We have learned how to fill it and we have learned how to offset. Now, another thing that you can do is chamfer and chamfer is almost like fillet, only the chamfer, instead of giving it a nice round, it just kind of hacks the edge off and gives you a, a sort of straight cut. So let's see how that works. Let's come back and let's make a rectangle. I click and release and then I drag and let's say, let's make it 75 wide and eh, let's make it, let's make it 35 wide. And then let's make it, let's tab over to the height and let's make that uh, 50. How about that? Okay, that looks pretty good. Enter. And now I'm going to look at my sketch. I am fully constrained, which makes me happy. And I've got a rectangle that's in the right position with the right dimension. Very good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I am going to create a chamfer. And let's create the first one, an equal distance one. I want to chamfer this. And I want to champ for this and boom, I get the corner cut off. And now I can say how much of the corner do I want to cut off? It's 8.75. Well, let's say 15. It can be much bigger like 15, or we could even do just barely take anything off and say two. I click enter and boom, that is, uh, <clears throat> that is cut off again i'm getting these warnings back behind me because i took that corner off that corner constraint disappeared but i don't care why because my my uh, design my sketch is still fully constrained okay that's pretty cool but let me also show you that's sort of a symmetric chamfer where it's taking the same amount off of each edge what I could also do is I could come in and I could undo and I could do a different type of chamfer, which is the uh, two distance chamfer. And here I want to chamfer this and I want to chamfer this. And this time I, I'm going to get two dimensions. The first one it's giving me, it looks like it's the left and right one. How do I know that? Because it's lit up in blue. And so let's make that three. Okay. And now, even though you don't see the other box, you click tab and it takes me to the other dimension and let's make that one 12. Okay. And now enter boom. You see how I now have a non-symmetric chamfer and that is a three and a 12 and I am rewarded with a fully constrained sketch. I could come in and say, ah, let's double click on that and make that one six. And let's double click on this one and let's make it 18. And so you see, I can adjust that shape and stay fully constrained. Now, if we had extruded this and made a 3D object, that 3D object would be, it would be following these changes that we're doing here. So pretty powerful, isn't it? So let's take that. I'm going to delete it. I think I'm going to delete it, select it delete. Okay. And now let's see what other friends we have up here in the modify. We've done fillet. We've done chamfer. I think that I'm going to show you how to trim because I think trim is pretty important. So let's get the circle tool. Let's draw a circle at the origin. Let's make this circle 25. Enter. Boom. Fully constrained. It's locked to the origin and it has a specific dimension. Now, if I'm going to design out here, thinking ahead for it to be fully, dis uh, fully constrained, I'm going to need to give it a point, a deliberate point to design to. So I'll get the line. I'm going to come over here and say I want it to be a construction line. Under line type, we're going to get construction line. I'm going to hover over the origin. Click. I'm going to drag and let's come out here. Oh, let's come out here. Let's say 50. Okay. And now enter. Boom. I have a construction line. Now, if I get a second circle and come, I can hover over that point 
and now I can click on that point and then drag. And this one, let's say, let's see if I can make that a radius of 60 and then enter and boom, I have fully constrained. Now, what did I do wrong? This was still set on construction type, a construction type, so it made a construction circle. That was a mistake. How can I fix it? I click on it and I come over here and I turn off construction and now I have a line and still that line. <coughs> I have a solid line on the circle, solid radius on the circle, and I am still fully constrained. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to say, I want to make a neat little object and I'll draw a line from here to let's say here and darn it, that thing I left on again. So let me turn it off, get select, select it, turn it off. And then I'm going to get line again. And then I'm going to draw from here over to here kind of randomly. And now certainly not constrained because these lines are, I was not deliberate about position or I was not deliberate about dimension. But now what I can do is I can select it and I can say, I want it to be tangent, right? You can come up here to the tangent to look under constraints and say tangent. I want this to be tangent to this. I want this to be tangent to that. I want this to be tangent to this. I want this to be tangent to this. And I want this to be tangent to this. And boom, look at that. I've got a really slick shape here and it is fully constrained. So that is really neat. Now, a couple of things I don't like. I'm going to get the select tool. <clears throat> I don't like these dimensions on the interior of my sketches. And so I like to take those dimensions and I like to kind of move them out of the way. That was my construction line dimension. And this is my diameter. And so I kind of like to get all of those out of the way. You know, it's very poor design practice to have hidden lines inside of bodies <clears throat> that I'm going to extrude. And so really, I don't want this curve here. I don't want this curve here and I don't want these inside curves. Let me show you how to get rid of them. You come up to modify and you say trim. Now you've got to be very careful with the trim tool because the trim tool is going to remove constraints and sometimes those constraints will cause your little lock to go away. Pro tip, if you get rid of that little lock, fix it right then. Don't go and spend another hour designing and then wonder why your sketch isn't fully constrained. Deal with your constraints as you go. But I have my trim tool. I'm going to come down here and say trim off this outside line. But you see it's only taking the segment from the tangent down to the construction line. That's okay. I'm going to take it off and sure enough I got a warning. But I'm not going to worry about it because my sketch is still fully constrained. Whatever it took off didn't matter. And then I'm going to trim off that line. Same thing, I'm still fully constrained and take that off and then take that off and Shazam, look at that. I've gotten rid of my inside lines. Now understand this is not an inside line. That's just showing you the radius and you can see that that is just a, uh, <coughs> I did not mean to finish the sketch. Let me go back and let me go back and edit the sketch. I'm sorry. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to get my select tool and just show you <clears throat> that that was not an inside line. That was just a dimension visualization aid. And so if you don't want to see it at all, you can kind of move things around to where it doesn't uh, quite show so much. But now look, what I am I? I am fully constrained and I've gotten rid of my inside uh, line. So I could finish sketch. I could look here. I could come here. I could extrude 25, enter, and boom. Look, I've got a pretty slick shape there that's ready to print. Okay, a pretty slick shape there that's ready to print and no internal confusion with internal lines. All right, I'm going to undo that and then I'm going to go back to my sketch level, edit sketch. All right, I think that what I'll do now is I will just select all of this and I will delete it. And now we're going to come in and we're going to find another tool that is very useful. So we're going to get the rectangle. This time I'm going to make sure that I'm not making a construction line. I'm going to come here, click on the origin, release the click, come up. <clears throat> Let's make this 100, 199, 
100 wide. <clears throat> I tab to the height box. Let's make it 75 high. Now enter. Boom. I've got a rectangle fully defined. That's good. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come over here. <clears throat> I hover over that corner and I've got the circle. I click on the corner. I come out. Let's make that 75. Enter. And boom, I've got kind of an interesting shape there, right? I've got kind of an interesting shape. What if I wanted to extrude that? What if I wanted to extrude that? Well, I've got this line and this line and this. These are all kind of problems for me. So I'm going to come and get my trim tool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this. When I trim it, I get the warning. Okay, when I trim it, I get the warning, but I'm still fully constrained. Now I'm going to trim this one and get a warning and, and uh-oh, what? I am no longer fully constrained. I am no longer fully constrained. Why? Because this center point was tied. It was tied to that corner. And when I got rid of that corner, I got rid of where this, I got rid of the position. And so like if I came in and I said select, I could select this and I could move it. And you see all of a sudden this thing is like, wonky broken it's wonky broken so i'm going to undo that i'm going to undo the trim i'm going to undo the trim what happens if you trim and you get rid of that internal line and it causes a problem will you fix it right now and i'll show you how to fix it and that is with another tool which is the break tool and what i want to do is i want to break this line segment from the overall line segment. So I get that break <clears throat> and I come here and I break that. Now I have two line segments that are totally separate. This one I'm going to break and this one and this one are now <clears throat> not tied to each other. And I'm still okay. I'm still fully constrained. Now this one, I'm going to say select it. I'm going to say select that line and now I just select that little segment and what I can do is I can come over here and I can say make that a line type construction. And then this line type construction. And what's the good news? It's okay to have a construction line in a solid surface, but we don't have those solid lines. Now, what is still my problem? Still, this is my problem, this segment here. And so now I think that I could probably just trim off and boom, look at that. And let's see, something went <clears throat> awry there. I did something wrong. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, that is still there. Okay, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and trim. Okay, and that is good. I am fully constrained. Somehow I ended up trimming this off, which I didn't want to do. But what do I have now? I have a sketch that is fully constrained and doesn't have internal solid lines. That actually looks like something that would be kind of interesting. Hmm, what could I do here? I could come in and I could make another circle. Okay, I could make another circle here at this point. Okay, click and come <coughs> out. And this one, let's say we're going to come out 60, okay, and enter. And look at that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, first of all, make sure I can see what my dimensions are so I can match them. It looks like it's a 75 outside, 60 inside. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get a circle, click, drag. That one I'm going to make 75. Enter. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and trim it up. What I remember is I can trim this one without creating a problem. But then these two I need to break. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to say break, break this, break that. And now I need to come in with line type and I need to say this. I want to be a construction line. Be mindful of palette, get select, select that, make it a construction line, select that, make it a construction line. I'm still fully constrained. I still need to put the circle there, <clears throat> the inner circle, click, release, drag. And then this one was 60. Okay. Enter. 
And now look at that, fully constrained, and I've got kind of an interesting shape. Now, watch the magic happen. What do I do? I finish my sketch, I look at the home view, and then I come here and I say this whole thing I want to what? I want to extrude out 50 and then enter. Do you see how I have made a most excellent little bracket? And it is fully constrained. And I could go in now and I could edit that bracket. How would I do that? I would get select. I would come over here. I would right mouse click and I would say edit sketch. And let's say that I'm going to move these out here again just to have them out of the way. I don't like things inside. It doesn't hurt to have those inside. It's just I like them out where I can see them a little better. Let's make this 50. Okay. And then I'll click enter. And then let's make this 50 and I'm going to click enter and then I'm going to make I'm going to make this one I'm going to make this one 80 enter and I'm going to make this one 80 enter and then up I really don't like that sharp edge and so I'm going to what I'm going to fill it it so I'm going to come down here fill it that and that and 10 looks pretty good fill it that and that and 10 looks pretty good so I'll click enter Boom, look at that, fully constrained. Now let's watch the magic happen. Finish sketch and let's go to that home view. And this whole body has updated and didn't break to the new things that I did where? That I did at the sketch level, okay? Are you seeing the power of mastering the sketch level? I hope you are. Okay, I think at this point I should probably start with a new design. So I'm going to come in here, new design. Hopefully you guys are start, starting to see the power of really mastering the 2D sketch level. Now I've got a couple more to show you here. Let's go ahead and we've got a new design. Let's create a sketch. Working in the red-green plane, the XY plane. <clears throat> I think I'm going to start this time with a circle. Hover over the origin, drag, let's make it 75, looks pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna get the polygon. We're gonna have, this is also gonna help you see how to constrain things, because a polygon is a crazy animal to try to constrain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a polygon, it'll give me a six-sided one by default, so I will get the circumscribed polygon. I will come out here at a random spot, I will click, take my hand off, I will drag. Now I'm dragging it to kind of get it at least uh, where <clears throat> those edges are snapping to vertical. And then that is saying 40. Let's say we make it 25. That looks pretty good and enter. Now what you're going to see is this, uh, this crazy polygon is not constrained at all. But what I know is I want this edge touching the edge of the circle. So that would be a line to a circle would be what? That would be a tangent constraint. I could come down here and get tangent. I could say make this line segment tangent to that. Boom. Those are touching just like I want. That's really cool, right? What's wrong? This is nowhere near constrained because this, <clears throat> if I got select, it can be tangent and it can be up and down. So what do I want? I want this point aligned horizontally with that point. So click off so that there's nothing selected. <clears throat> We're going to come over and remember how we can align points with our horizontal vertical constraint. Okay, horizontal vertical constraint. Now be careful. I want this point, click, release, hold the shift key down because you're aligning two points. We come over here and we click there and boom, now that. You would think this should be fully constrained at this point, but it's not because Fusion 360 is trying to, it's imagining some crazy other way that you could have this. But what you can do is if we made this one vertical, if we made this one and forced it to be vertical, Shazam! fully constrained. Okay, all that was just kind of practicing how to get a hard shape fully constrained. <clears throat> but what I really want to do is <clears throat> I want this to extend and join so I could create kind of this hexagon circle shape. But the contact area has to be greater than, than just this. So I want to extend this line to here 
and extend this line to here. <clears throat> you could try to draw it, and if you took 30 minutes, you could probably do it, but you would probably be using words that your mother wouldn't want you to use. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a real powerful tool. I'm gonna to come up to modify. I'm gonna say extend. Now, if I point here, it's extending in the wrong way because I'm too far up here. But if I bring this down, I'm try I show it, I want to extend this way. And what does it do? It perfectly draws a little line to extend the line I have to the next intersecting body, which is that circle. And so I click and boom, I have that little line segment I wanted and I am fully constrained. So I will want to do this as well. <clears throat> now that is a really neat shape, but what is the problem? I have these internal lines. I want to get rid of them. How do I get rid of them? I'm going to try with trim. Let's see if trim works. I can trim that. I'm still fully constrained. I can trim that. I'm still fully constrained. But this is the moment of truth. I do that and boom, I lost it. Because that was the side that was defined to be tangent with the circle. And so that didn't work because I lost it. So let's go back and let's try this. Let's say that I'm gonna take this line and I'm going to make it a construction line. That's good, I'm still constrained. Let's see if I could come up now and trim. I probably, uh, let's see. Why did that break it? Let's try it again. Okay, that is, that's still happy. But if I come in, if I trim this segment, it's still happy. I might get in trouble if I trim that, but no, look, okay. So I leave this as a construction line and I have this complicated shape that's fully constrained <clears throat> because I was able to use that little extend. Man, I just can't help it. I want to go back and I want to use what? I want to use the offset and I want to select that whole shape. I want to offset it, let's say minus 10 like that. Oh, that was too much. Let's extend it minus five. Let's see what happens. Ah, there. You see, I'm kind of getting a really cool keyhole shape. I can now come over here. I can finish sketch. I can go to this view. I can take this outside and I can extrude it. Let's go 50. And you see, boom, look at that. We have got a really slick 3D shape that we have created. And that 3D shape is fully editable because I can come back to sketch. I can edit my sketch. And let's say instead of 75, let's make that 125 like that. And then if I come back, finish sketch, look at that. Boom. Okay. Guys, are you starting to see the power of mastering 2D sketching? The battle for Fusion 360 is won or lost at the 2D sketch level. Never edit or adjust something in 3D that can be done in 2D. Anything that can be edited in 2D should be edited <coughs> in 2D. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Let me go back. I don't think there's really anything else here that we need to look at. The other one that we didn't look at under modify, we didn't look at this sketch scale. You can just sort of scale the whole sketch up and down if you want to. That's pretty good. You can move, you can move it here. We've already shown you how to move it. And then parameters will be something that will be a completely separate lesson. But all right, guys. Let's come up back up here to the river cam. Guys, I think I've pretty much shown you what you need to be a real pro in Fusion 360. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start going out and we're going to start working more in the 3D level because I feel like I've given you the tools to master in the 2D level. I need to give you guys a homework and that is I want you guys to just what you've learned with this 2D sketching to do a design 
where you really do something bodacious in the 2D level, you end up with a fully constrained 2D sketch. You just extrude it and then you print it, okay? Now what is fair, you don't need to make it necessarily real big because I haven't really taught you how to tweak your printer and tweak your slicing and tweak everything where you can print big things without them breaking. But come up with something that's like a really cool design. And then what I want you to do is I want you to make a video and post your homework to YouTube. <clears throat> and when you post your homework, make sure that you show your audience that you are fully constrained in the 2D level. And then I want you to show what you printed. Now you might not want to sit you might not want to sit and record the thing being printed, but at least then show what it looks like in 3D. So that is your homework assignment. When you post your homework to YouTube, in your description, make sure that you link back to this video, okay? And then in the comments down below, leave a <clears throat> link over to your video so everyone taking this lesson can go and see what people are doing. I watch every single homework solution that you guys post. A lot of times I leave comments on them and really I want you guys, I love it when you're watching each other's homework solution and you can kind of pick up tips and what is this nonsense? I'm now getting spam calls on Skype. How many different ways can people spam me? Okay, so do your homework, post it, and then in future lessons we're going to start moving more into the three-dimensional design space and then we're also going to be working on tweaking and improving the printers I'll be going along with time I'll be showing you some very low-cost upgrades that you can do to your Ender printer your Creality printer to get more and more print performance out of it okay guys I hope you are enjoying taking these lessons as much as I am making them. If you like the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up because that helps us with the old YouTube juice. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment down below because when you leave a comment, that also helps me and this video will be shown to more people because the world needs what? It needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter <clears throat> with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.